Hey guys, time for another Pagan Parcel unboxing. This is the Witchy Essentials box for August. And I'm just going to do what I did before, pull everything out of the box because it's easier to record it that way. Uh, I did get asked how, what I do with these boxes after I'm done with them. They're kind of shoe, si shoe box size, kids shoe box size. Obviously they are not big enough for a pair of boots in my size because I'm a whopping size 9. Uh, I actually keep my wigs in them so I put a little Polaroid picture on the end of what my wig looks like and I put my wigs in them. It's quite a good idea I think. Okay let's have a look see what we've got. I can smell basil. Yep. It's a very strong smell. Oh, that's what the smell is underneath the basil. I love the smell of basil. I've got basil on the kitchen windowsill. I have my own fresh basil. Ooh, angelica root. Looks like tea. Lots of tea this month by the look of it. Orange candles. Witch's brew. Ooh, tea. Yes, there we go. Fun. Okay, so we've got peach kernel oil, uh, base oil, Peaches, Magical Aspects, Abundance, Fruitfulness and Happiness. Sorry for the herd of elephants noises in the background. Maddie and Scooby have decided that running up and down the house is today's pastime. Peach is the emblem for marriage. Can be used in various lotions and creams. Good in, uh, rich in vitamin E. Can be used on its own as a moisturiser can be used to replace grapeseed oil, apricot kernel oil or sweet almond oil in any recipes. Chemically and physically similar to apricot kernel oil and almond oil but it's more expensive than sweet almond possibly because it's not produced in such large quantities and is mostly cold pressed. So you can make a nice skin cream out of that. In fact didn't we have a skin cream last time? If you're if, like me, you've got an older skin, peach kernel might be a good option to put in instead of the oil that would came in the regular lotion. <clears throat> As a more mature skin thing. Uh, that's the tea. We'll put that aside for a second. Uh, let's check what else we've got here. Right, Angelica root. That's this one looks like wood shavings and it smells like curry. Once thought to have been a cure for the plague, it is a warming herb good for teas, uh, help to ease discomfort of colds, sore throats and fever. It stimulates digestion, relieves wind and colic, good for PMS etc. So it's and good for people with high blood pressure. So probably not a pregnant woman thing. Uh, people with diabetes need to be warned that this root increases sugar level in the blood. So be careful of that. And yeah, pregnant women should not eat large quantities of angelica and fresh fruit roots should be avoided as it may cause photosensitivity. That's uh, when you get really bad sunburn and sensitive to daylight. So magical uses, powerful protection herb, attracting positive energy and protecting against negative energy, creating a barrier used in healing and exorcism. So pretty strong purification, protection, crossing spells, removing hexes and curses. So quite an all rounder. And there's a couple of different uh, oils that you can make out of it. Hmm. Interesting. I don't actually, I don't think I've got any angelica root. I think I've had, I've got an angelica plant, so I've got fresh angelica, but I don't think I've ever had dried angelica. I might try that as a tea. It does smell like curry. It's very nice. So hops. The word hops is taken from Anglo-Saxon hopen, meaning to climb because the twining perennial plant attached itself to neighbourhood objects and grew to a great height. First discovered in Egypt and used as a medicinal herb to cure insomnia. 
Potential properties of hops were discovered when hop pickers started to fall asleep on the job. And for a long time, it was known as hop pickers fatigue. <laughs> the bitter acids and volatile oil of the hop flowers or cones, as you can see there, see the, they're like, um, almost like popcorn size, produced a sedative effect which calmed the nerves and relaxes and helps you fall asleep. Hops are also known as beer flower because uh, in Europe since at least the 11th century uh, hops have been brewed into beer as a digestive aid. Hops are related to uh, the cannabis plant not surprisingly. Antibacterial, antimicrobial, inhibit the growth of skin tumours, tinctures based on hops used to reduce painful swelling, bruises and boils, compresses for neuralgia and rheumatic pains and various tonics to purify the blood and renew, reduce nervousness. Magically speaking, uh, use for uh, easy sleep, pleasant dreams and reducing nightmares, similar to calendula. Also used in dream magic. And there's a recipe here for a sachet for sleep, which has got all the usual suspects in uh, lavender, chamomile, rosemary, thyme and so on. Tea can also help with restful sleep. And... For magical purposes, it's used to balance and refocus your energy back to ordinary reality. Whatever that is. <laughs> so, interesting one that. Again, I don't have any hops, so that's a new one on me. Basil, I'm not even going to bother to read because we've done basil so many times. Uh, general embalming herb, cleansing herb, removing negative spirits and negativity and all that kind of stuff and it's uh, used for anxiety and insomnia as well so all of the stuff we've got this month seems to be stuff that is helping to reduce anxiety and insomnia which is a good one because in this month's astrology over on my patreon we've been looking at the psychotic effects of a uranus retrograde which is basically you know feelings of doom and gloom and we're all going to die in a freak napalming incident so yeah i suspect some of these will come in handy <laughs> So there's the basil. Oh, and we've got a tea ritual as well. So that's interesting. So an actual ritual. Feeling the moon flow through you, using the elements, good for relaxation, meditation, pre-dream magic and all that kind of stuff. So this is our tea ritual. There's a lot in there. Oh, look, we've got a little tea strainer. Oh, how fab. <laughs> this sounds nice. We've got rose, rose hip and hibiscus already. Let's have a look. So we've got ingredients for four different types of tea that you can mix and blend and change around. We've got late summer tea, healing tea, harvest tea and summer tea. And our enclosed ingredients are jasmine, rose, bay leaves, rosemary, rose hips, lemon balm, thyme, hibiscus, lemon, lime, chamomile and yarrow. Everybody knows how to make tea, I hope. You basically blend it all together, stick it in your little tea ball or if you're making it in a teapot, in, in the teapot with a strainer and steep for five to ten minutes in boiling water. Tea is not difficult. The hardest part is straining it sufficiently. So there you go, that's a nice little selection of making your own teas. We've even got, is that cinnamon? It doesn't say anything about cinnamon. Let's have a look. So there's our little tea strainer. You, you put your tea in it and you clip it together. Oops, can't see the hole. I've got my glasses on too, cranky. So you pop it together and then you hang it with the little hook 
on your cuppa. I just want to see what that stick thing is at the bottom because it doesn't say anything about it on the unless I misread it. There it is. Come along. Yeah, cinnamon. It's a piece of cinnamon. There is no cinnamon listed on the front. Bargain. So a bit of grated cinnamon on top of your tea, give it a little bit of spice. Lovely. Nice little recipes in there. Look forward to making some of those and trying them. And that's our August box from the Pagan Parcels at Crafting Magic. So uh, I shall see you next month for the September one. And in the meantime, happy tea making. <laughs>